help me down down from this elevation I've never found much hope in a temptation take my hand and close your eyes take my hand and close your eyes if I seem scared, if I seem scared, cross an ocean, senses, gas for the air, gas for the air. Wide idea for Down the Hatch, not just here in the Outer Banks, but the whole mentality of that idea is like the hatch of, think of uh, Alice in Wonderland jumping down into this hole and you see this whole other world and you get to hang out with the artists uh, in, in a place that they, um, you know, normally would not allow you to to get to. I feel like the connection with the fans is at, at the core. I've been doing this now as an artist for 20 years. And just those moments before a show, after a show, when you get to interact with someone um, on a personal level, I know from experience of if I ever got to meet my idols, and, and I was very fortunate with Allman Brothers, James Taylor, Fleetwood Mac, able to shake the hand of these guys and just have two seconds I've told that story a hundred times, and I didn't get to spend, you know, a weekend on the beach with them. So, not that we're at the level of those artists, but to some people, the music, specifically the artists that I bring here, the music that they play is, can be the soundtrack to these people's daily lives. And they maybe met their future spouse at one of the concerts. They, um, they, they've kind of grown up with specifically maybe my band, the Pat McGee Band, and um, Down the Hatch allows me to invite those hardcore fans to a location that I grew up going to as a child, the gorgeous Outer Banks of North Carolina. I've toured with all these artists, and I know them on a personal level, and they not only bring the real deal, authentic singer-songwriter, uh, honest music, they also, their personalities are just as powerful as their as their on stage, uh, you know, persona or their their original music. So I know they're going to jive with any fan that comes here. They're going to be able to hang on the beach. They're not too cool for school. And obviously, down here, like Pat McGee is the big draw for Down the Hatch. And to for for me personally, like growing up, like I was a huge Pat McGee fan. So this is like kind of the most amazing thing I've done. This, this is my third year now that I'm here, and um, it just gets better and better every year. Matt Duke from Philadelphia, just one of the most original artists out there. If you look at this guy, you're like, there's no way that sound is coming out of that human being. He is a freak of nature when it comes to bearing it all. It's And I, you can tell that every song, every performance is so, you know, gut-wrenching to him. And he's really, he really is, you know, he doesn't have to work hard to sell what he's, you know, singing about. So. Pat, Pat calls me up and, and said, uh, Colby, I, I run this event, you know, and, I, and I'd love to have you, uh, you know, do your thing. And um, it'd be really great if you were on the bill. And I remember looking at the bill and seeing everybody on it and being like, man, this is like playing with people that I can't really describe. It, it's one of those things where it's like, everybody on, on the bill is people that I listen to, people that I, 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 I love their music, I'm a fan of their music. So the fact that I, my name was under that made me feel relevant in the music world. Yeah. Everyone has that same thing. Tony Luca does what he does. Emily Hurton does what she does, which is like this angelic, almost like a Karen Carpenter vibe where you're like, you know, when you say people can sing the phone book. Found the heart of my best friend. It's the kind of love that understands. Say it changes life to be my man. So he bought a ring and took my hand. Yeah, we got Jason the Don.
Damo from Raleigh, North Carolina. He has, he does this you know, little country slash blue-eyed soul. He spent years playing in like subways in London, I think, to learn how to get people's attention. And when you see him do his thing, you can tell that he, he can just command a room with a giant, giant voice that he has. What do the after hours scenes look like? The jam sessions and the, uh, the what have you, the parties? The after hours of, uh, the after hours of Down the Hatch is that of uh, <laughs> epic folklore. I am, um, I feel as if you cannot have a party without music, so this is about to happen. I definitely don't put it on the schedule because I don't want, I don't want people to, you know, it, it needs to happen organically. And fans, those are the moments where fans will bring their guitars out or they're like, the best stuff happens late night when we go down, you know, if we're back in the hotel ballroom or in someone's, even in someone's room, um, and you can sit around and, and hear artists collaborate and be like, oh, you know that song too? Oh, let's do that together. And you bring a fan in on it and they get to play with the artist. I mean, that's just, that's uh, an experience that they're never gonna get in, in another situation. They might, you see people that come to the Grateful Dead shows or whatever and they sit in the parking lot and they play the song on the guitar. I mean, what would happen if, if uh, you know, back in the day, Garcia walks over to their tailgate and says, hey man, you wanna play Box of Rain with me? And they're gonna go, are you kidding me? I have always felt from a performance standpoint that there's only certain types of music, certain types of bands, I think, that can get away with playing at you. My favorite type of music is the stuff that involves the audience, not from a sing along with me or clap along, it's the energy that you get from the audience. It really affects the shows, big time. And that vibe that down the hatch, it, it extends to an acoustic performance sitting at someone's by a beach chair to a full-blown, you know, gut-wrenching guitar solo, uh, you know, duel that's going on with all these artists at night and their fans are just eating it up. We've been thinking about a lot. And that energy is it, it's it goes to the band, it goes right back to the audience. I always I always say that we need to play with them as opposed to play at them. If we just play at them, you know, that's what you know sometimes you get when you go to the arenas and you just kinda you get pounded with the music and you leave and you're not you're not engaged. And if we don't do our jobs as you know, ultimately we are entertainers on, on some level, so you have to engage the audience. Doesn't mean you have to even say anything to them, but musically, emotionally, and some performances, you can really draw them in, whether you're, you're speaking to them between songs or not. And when the when the show is over, the, the big difference about this one, we don't get in our you know our tour bus and bolt. We all go back to the same hotel. We in, we encourage them to come down and hang out afterwards down on the beach or on these one of these decks, and we play some more tunes. And I, I've I've played requests for people right, you know, outside of their room or sitting by their t picnic table, whatever they want. If they want to hear a specific song, I will gladly give that to them because that's an experience you're going to go go away with. Going, I mean, we were having dinner and then he walks over and says, "What song do you want to hear?" I'll, and I'll play it. So that kind of thing is just you're never going to get that going to some huge show. Take my hand and close your eyes. Take my hand and close your eyes.
close your eyes If I seem scared, if I seem scared Across the ocean senses Gasping for air, gasping for air, helpless Gotta breathe in, gotta breathe out Gone overboard because of love 